modern mean? You might think of a piece of modern art like this or a modern invention like the airplane. <laughs> uh, and I think when we say, when we talk about what is modern in graphic design, some people have a very specific definition in mind where others might have a broader definition. So let's discuss it. When we think about pre-modern times, sometimes it's fun to think about the times before modern so-called civilization, when humans like us were living in small groups and living off the land, maybe waiting for a coconut to fall from the tree or uh, scaring up a few oysters from the ocean shore, eating them, fishing on a creek, no telephones, no uh, internet, no loud people on boats going by. Um, <clears throat> but that's not the kind of modern world we're talking about. Um, humankind settled in, into an agricultural lifestyle, and built cities, developed language, architecture, all the things we talked about last semester. That was way beforehand. That's like 4,000, 5,000 years uh, before the Common Era. I'm talking about the period from about 1900 on when the art world suddenly and dramatically changed. And to set up what was happening in graphic design later, let's talk about the fine arts and the new movements that were happening. Actually, the whole world that was bringing to birth these new movements. You had, in 1839, the invention of the first photograph, which really blew the mind of painters because the purpose of making a painting suddenly seemed completely different. In 1882, New York City was electrified, lighting up the night, extending the day, extending the working hours, and really bringing a whole new uh, visual elegance to the world. Skyscrapers were going up all around Europe and the United States, being constructed with these new iron innards that could support tall, towering buildings. You got Mr. Freud with his new crazy theory of the unconscious, and I said crazy intentionally, uh, including the interpretation of dreams. Steam engines blowing across the continent, uh, moving people faster than they'd ever been moved before, bringing people into cities, out of cities, uh, just, you know, steaming around. And the artwork that was created partially in response to this brave new world was going on all over Europe and was finally brought to the United States in 1913. A couple young artists went around, made some deals, bought some interesting paintings, or got them on loan and brought them to the New York Armory. A lot of the modern masters that you know, Picasso, Matisse, uh, Kandinsky, Cezanne, uh, André Breton, all kinds of modern movements were represented in that show. So with this upheaval in the world of art, one of the artists, Hannah Hawk, said, we regarded ourselves as engineers. We maintained that we were building things, like putting our work together like fitters. So they were building really a whole new vision of fine art. This piece, called Three Sisters by Henry Hubble, might appear more traditional, more um, conservative, more old-fashioned to you. Obviously, the girls are wearing old-fashioned clothes. But at its time, this was part of a movement that was really revolutionary. Uh, people in the art world trashed paintings like this because they thought they were messy and hasty. It's part of the Impressionist movement in the early 1900s. This was painted in 1903. If you zoom in, from a little at some of this brushwork down here where critics would say that the painting was unfinished, uh, that it was not hyper-realistic. And the Impressionist artists were interested in capturing the effect of light on the world and also in portraying a picture of reality that was a little bit in motion um, with things like trees that were seemed to be moving in the breeze or grass that appeared to be blown by the wind. So when you think about it, our reality, hyper-reality, is not, we're not looking at the world in focus and perfect uh, stillness all the time. The artists, actually, at this period, were struggling to make paintings more real, not less real. 
This is a fun piece. It feels like a jungle gym to me or a children's playground. Sometimes modern art is all about the response. All art really is all about the response of the viewer. It's not necessarily um, trying to portray a scene or capture a specific uh, visual artifact of the world, but more to generate some kind of an emotion. So when I see this bright red, almost fallen skyscraper reaching for the sky, something about it brings me a little bit of joy. In general, the journey of modernism in art is one from more representational to less representational, but that's not completely true. It's like once we've reached a state of complete abstraction, of complete non-representationalness, there kind of wasn't anywhere else to go. So artists began reinventing the methods and the journey of, moder of modernity, of modernness, once we'd gotten to abstract completely abstract, what could be more modern than completely abstract? So we'll have to keep an eye out for that. This piece is interesting. It's also got a sense of humor. When you look at it from afar, it appears though, as though it's made out of pieces of driftwood. They're weathered, it's gray, it looks like wood that's been sitting in the sun for a while. But actually it's cast bronze. They must have done a lost wax version, made an actual sculpture out of, um, out of found pieces of wood and then cast it in bronze. So here, the artist is playing with both old and new, using an old technique like bronze, using found materials, which is a very new idea, and creating something that, again, has a hint of, of representation. We know it's a horse, we can feel its emotions almost, the way that it's holding its neck, gracefully bending over, and yet it's abstract also. It feels like a sketch drawn in bronze in the air. This piece is from a modern era. You can tell it's not a statue made in ancient classical Greek and Greece or Rome. It's, it's not carved out of marble or wood or bronze. It's made from, it looks like cast aluminum or welded uh, or you know, connected aluminum pieces. And the, uh, the figure is made out of letters. So in this case, we have graphic design affecting fine art. You can see letters, characters from different alphabets, from the Roman alphabet, Cyrillic, um, Japanese, um, etc. cetera. Uh, so this statement seems to say something about identity since the person's face, the figure's face is missing. And again, the artist is talking about something. It's not a literal portrait of a person. It's got a more of an emotional or symbolic meaning that the reader has to supply himself. I mean, the viewer, the reader, the viewer, the audience. So thanks for listening to that little setup for what we're going to study this semester. We're going to be taking a close look at a lot of things with the lemon. Enjoy watching the rest of the videos, and I'll talk to you next week. Over and out.